after sifting through the girls' cross-country season last week, it's time to delve into the boys' cross-country season. Welcome to Sports Talk. I'm your host, Tyler Sloan. The big question for McKinney's boys' cross-country team in the fall was whether they could duplicate the incredible success they've had the last few years in a new district. Coach Francis Jones is here to answer. Brad Patterson of Boy joins me as well to discuss his team's journey through the District 10-5A meet and beyond. In part two of our interview with McKinney North's Jessica Richards, who coaches both guys and girls cross-country teams. All of this and more up next on Sports Talk. boys cross country team didn't have the season that they were wanting to have moving up to a new 5a classification into a new district a lot of tougher challenges than they faced before I'm joined by their head coach Francis Jones and coach going into this year you knew with the big step up that you know the strain of appearances at regionals was going to be in, in jeopardy for your team that it was going to be a challenge like they've never seen before how would you go into this year to prepare for such a big jump well, we've done the same thing that we've been doing each and every summer in terms of making sure we get our mileage in. Um, we pick the pace up toward the end of the summer. So we pretty much get the same you know, type of routine that we've done you know, for the, a number of years now uh, with the focus knowing that we're going to be 5A, but you know, and all in all, cross country is still cross country. So we didn't change the focus. We just know that there's going to be more kids, more teams that can run just as well. And some of the meets leading up to district meet, what were they like and how they prepare your team for what they would face in the district meet? Well, the only difference is the meets are the same. Um, obviously, we run, it, run in a 5A division compared to running a 4 division. is a lot different. A lot of the meets that we've gone to in the past, the 4A and the 5A run together. So it wasn't like we didn't, haven't seen the Allens, the Planos, and you know, those schools that within our area. So we see those people week in and week out. It's just that now we're in that same district as opposed to getting ready for the 4A district we're trying to get ready for the 5A district. One of your top runners this year, Matt Fontias, he ended up going through the district meeting. He qualified for regional. Talk about his leadership for this team and what it meant to them moving forward. Well, he was the, kind of the catalyst of what we've had. I mean, the kids rallied around him. Um, and I th thought he did a good job of doing what he was supposed to do in terms of knowing that he is the focus of, of what we're doing at McKinney High, being the number one runner week in and week out. Uh, I don't think he had a lot of pressure on him in a sense, but he knew that he had to run really well to get out, um, and, and he did. He had a, a great race that, at the district meet, but he had to run really, really well to get out because we couldn't have a mediocre race and get out of this district. Going into the regional meet for Matt, since he was the only person that, that qualified for the regional meet from your school, what were you telling him before the meet to help him prepare to run his best? Just relax and expect to be here. I mean. I'm, you expect to make it to regionals, and, and you know, deep down you know that he had to run lights out to get out of district and not let that be that we're just trying to get to the regional meet, even though we had to PR to get out of the district meet, which is a great thing for him and our team. But all in all, my deal with him is just you're going to run as well as you're going to run today. Don't worry about anything else. Just get out and run and compete, and then we'll see what happens after the race. That's one of the tricks, isn't it, to cross country is trying to run your best time at the end of the year yes. to where all of your races beforehand are, are just kind of leading up to that, that peak performance. Well, it's a little different when you're, if we're still in the, the older district that we were in before, then we can run a, we can tailor our training to peak at maybe the regional meet. We have to peak at district to get out of district. Um, you know, next year may be a little different in that we're a little more seasoned, we got a little more mileage behind us and um, a little more confidence. So we may not have to peak for the district meet we can peak for the regional meet if we're at that place, I mean, that point in time throughout the season that we're, you know, that much better than we were the previous year, that we have a good idea that we're going to get out. And I don't want to say that no, we're going to get out because you still have to run that 5K. It's not given to you. You finished six at the district meet mm -hmm. out of the six teams in the district, but some of those teams in your district are really strong teams. 
Plano West moved on to the state meet. Mm -hmm. Out of your district, Plano East and McKinney Boyd were the other two regional qualifiers. So tough competition moving forward. And you have a young group this year. How is that maturity next year going to help them to, to get out of sixth place and move up towards that third spot? Well, they would have an underclassman that we can pull, hopefully pull some other kids into the program as a result of that. Uh, it's a numbers game. You know, if I'm jogging out 30 kids in cross country, then the odds of finding five good ones are better. If you're jogging out 20, then obviously the, the, it's a numbers game. And you're not taking anything from any other school. We just need more kids in the program, and we've got to do a better job of getting those kids out. But you know, all in all, I mean, they're going to build on what happened or what we've done this past year. And not that it was a great year, but we had a good time, and our kids competed. So that's the thing that we're going to take to the next year. You only graduate one senior from this team this year, but it's a good one, Sam Anich. He was your number two or three runner. He is right mm -hmm. at the top of your team throughout the whole year. He's also our Scholar Athlete of the Week, a very smart kid as yes. well who always keeps up good yes. grades. Talk about what you're going to miss from him. Well, the thing is that he's a kid that's there every day. And early on, he has some tough things going on, just a few injuries here and there. But just being upbeat, uh, just trying to get kids going, and just being a positive person that can talk about what we've done in the past. And that's the thing is that, you know, where have we been? You know, what did he do his freshman year? And talk to young kids about that. You know, don't worry about it. You're going to get tired toward the end of the season, but, you know, here's how I dealt with it. Uh, what happened during the sophomore year and in the junior year when he's finally started to move up and get into the thick of being one of our top kids in the program. So seniors can share things with kids that, you know, from a coaching standpoint, you know, I can't share with them. I can only talk about someone else's story. So just giving them his perspective is a, is a plus what we're trying to do at McKinney High. Obviously, Matt's going to be the leader of the team next year, but who are a couple guys that are going to have to step up and join him with that leadership role for next year's McKinney cross country team? Well, we have um, a couple kids that's going to be seniors next year, and um, I think they're going to do a little bit better than they did this past year, but I got a kid by the name of Ryan Applewhite who, who came up and ran, came from the track team, but ended up running. I think he ended up being our number four. He'll help out a bunch. Um, I got a couple juniors to be a well, Sam will be a sophomore. I have another Sam who's a freshman this year. He'll be a sophomore, so he should help. Uh, just a host of them. I got um, Cole Murray is another kid that, that I'm hoping that will come through and help us. Cody Cortier should come through and help us a lot more. Um, and then James Griffin was a kid that I had that thought would help us this year, but he ended up getting his collarbone broken. So those type kids should come through and, and prove to be some valuable assets to us to get us out of sixth place and hopefully get us in the top four we can qualify and continue to go to regionals as a team like we've done you know, the last 10 years or so. Moving forward, now you're heading into the track season. How many of the runners from cross country are going to join you going into track season? How many are going to other sports, whether it be soccer or, or such? Sport? Well, a lot of the cross country kids are uh, scared to death of the track. Um, you don't get a chance to kind of run through the woods, what have you. You're right there on the oval going around and around. So, um, two or three of those kids, obviously Matt's going to run track, Sam's going to run track, um, Ryan Applewhite will run track. Um, those kids will, they'll do well once we get on the track because they can pick the pace up a little bit and run a little bit faster for a period of time. Some of the younger kids will continue to get mileage and build toward the cross country season. Coach Francis Jones, thanks again for joining us today. And a young team from the McKinney Lions boys cross country team, but that experience that they've gathered this year is really going to help them out next year in that tough District 10-5A to try and get back to the regional meet.